The vagina bible? I mean the boob bible? Not quite, but let's talk lactation. Hi everyone, Zeno here. Today we're diving into a topic that honestly feels like magic, but is really just pure, incredible biology, how our bodies make breast milk. It's a question I get a lot, and frankly, it's one of the most fascinating processes in human physiology. We often hear about the benefits of breastfeeding, but, you know, how many of us truly understand the intricate, hormone-driven symphony that happens behind the scenes? This isn't about just one thing happening. It's a complex, beautifully orchestrated event that starts long before your baby even arrives. It's a natural process, but that doesn't mean it's simple. So, let's demystify it together. We're going to unpack the science, bust some myths, and give you the facts, straight up. Think of this as your user's manual for lactation. We'll explore the hormonal triggers that prime your body during pregnancy, what happens the moment your baby is born, and how your body knows exactly how much milk to make. It's a demand and supply system that's honestly more sophisticated than any factory on earth. My goal is to empower you with knowledge, because understanding your body is the first step to trusting it. In this video, we'll break down the entire process into clear, manageable steps. We'll talk about the key hormonal players like prolactin and oxytocin. Don't worry, I'll make it easy to remember who does what. We'll cover everything from the first drops of colostrum, often called liquid gold, to how the simple act of your baby suckling sends a powerful message to your brain. So grab a cup of tea, get comfortable, and let's get into the incredible science of how breast milk is made. It's time to separate the facts from the fiction. Long before you're holding your baby, your body is already hard at work preparing for their arrival. This preparation is a hormonal masterpiece, conducted by a few key players. During pregnancy, your placenta is pumping out high levels of estrogen and progesterone. Think of these two as the general contractors for the project. Estrogen is responsible for stimulating the growth of the milk duct system in your breasts, essentially building the network of pipes through which milk will eventually travel. It's laying down the infrastructure, making sure everything is in place and ready to go when the time comes. This is why many people notice their breasts getting larger and more tender during pregnancy. It's not just random, it's construction. Meanwhile, progesterone is working alongside estrogen. Its main job is to increase the number and size of the milk-producing glands, which are called alveoli. If estrogen is building the plumbing, progesterone is building the little factories at the end of those pipes. These alveoli are tiny sacs where milk will actually be synthesized. Progesterone ensures that there are enough of these factories and that they're large enough to handle the production demands that are coming. It's a meticulous process of expansion and development, all happening silently and efficiently within your breast tissue, all thanks to these powerful hormones. Now, you might be wondering if the factories are being built, why aren't they producing milk yet? That's where another crucial hormone comes in. Prolactin. Prolactin is the go signal for milk production. Its levels rise steadily throughout pregnancy, but its effects are cleverly blocked by the high levels of progesterone. Progesterone essentially puts the brakes on lactation, telling the alveoli, get ready, but don't start the assembly line just yet. This is a brilliant biological failsafe. It ensures that your body doesn't start producing large quantities of milk until after the baby is born and the placenta, the source of that progesterone, is delivered. So, to recap the pregnancy phase, estrogen builds the ducts, progesterone builds the milk-making glands, the alveoli, and prolactin is standing by, ready to switch on production. It's a period of intense preparation. Your breasts are undergoing a complete renovation, transforming into a sophisticated nutritional facility. All of this is happening under the precise control of your endocrine system, setting the stage perfectly for the moment your baby arrives. The system is primed, the workers are ready, and the factory is about to get the green light to open for business. The moment of birth is the catalyst for a dramatic hormonal shift. When you deliver your baby, you also deliver the placenta. The removal of the placenta causes a sudden and steep drop in those high levels of estrogen and progesterone that dominated your entire pregnancy. Remember how progesterone was acting as the break on milk production? With the placenta gone, that break is released. The stop signal vanishes, and this allows the go signal, prolactin, to finally step up and take charge of the milk-making machinery that has been so carefully assembled over the past nine months. With progesterone out of the way, prolactin can now bind to its receptors in the alveoli, the milk-producing cells in your breasts. This is the official green light, 
prolactin signals these cells to start their primary function, taking nutrients like proteins, fats, and sugars from your bloodstream and synthesizing them into breast milk. The factory is now officially open. However, the first milk your body produces isn't what you might typically imagine. For the first few days postpartum, your breasts produce colostrum. This substance is often called liquid gold, and for very good reason. Colostrum is a thick, yellowish, and incredibly concentrated fluid. It's low in volume but packed with everything your newborn needs in those first few days of life. It's extremely high in protein, vitamins, minerals, and most importantly, antibodies and immunoglobulins. Think of it as your baby's first immunization. It coats their digestive tract, protecting them from germs and helping to establish a healthy gut microbiome from the very start. The small volume is also perfectly suited for a newborn's tiny stomach, preventing them from being overwhelmed while their digestive system is still maturing. It's the perfect first food, custom designed for a brand new human. This colostrum phase typically lasts for two to five days after birth. Then, as prolactin levels continue to work their magic and your baby begins to breastfeed more frequently, your body transitions to producing mature milk. You might notice your breasts feeling fuller, heavier, or even engorged during this time. This is often referred to as your milk coming in. This transition is a clear sign that the hormonal shift is complete and the milk production system is moving into full swing. The initial, highly concentrated starter fluid is being replaced by a higher volume mature milk designed to support your baby's rapid growth over the coming weeks and months. So, the milk is being produced in the alveoli thanks to prolactin. But how does it get from those tiny factories through the ducts and to your baby? Having milk in the breast isn't enough, it needs to be released. This process is controlled by another critical hormone, oxytocin, and is known as the milk ejection reflex, or more commonly, the letdown reflex. This reflex is honestly a beautiful example of the connection between your brain and your body, triggered directly by your baby. It's not a conscious action, it's a neurohormonal reflex. It all starts with your baby latching onto the breast and beginning to suckle. The nerves in your nipple and areola are incredibly sensitive. When your baby suckles, these nerves send an immediate signal up your spinal cord directly to your pituitary gland in your brain. It's like a direct phone call saying, the baby is here and ready to eat. In response to this nerve signal, your pituitary gland releases a pulse of oxytocin into your bloodstream. Oxytocin is sometimes called the love hormone for its role in bonding, but here, it acts as a powerful muscle contractor. This pulse of oxytocin travels through your blood and reaches your breasts. There, it targets the tiny, specialized muscle cells that surround each of the milk-filled alveoli. When oxytocin binds to these cells, it causes them to contract, to squeeze. This squeezing action pushes the milk that has been stored in the alveoli out into the milk ducts. It's kind of like squeezing a tiny water balloon. This rush of milk flows down the network of ducts towards the nipple, making it available for your baby to drink. Many people can actually feel this happening as a tingling pins and needles or sudden feeling of fullness in their breasts. What's fascinating is that this reflex isn't just triggered by physical touch. Because it starts in the brain, it can also be conditioned by psychological cues. For some people, just hearing their baby cry, seeing a picture of their baby, or even just thinking about breastfeeding can be enough to trigger an oxytocin release and a letdown reflex. This is why you might find yourself leaking milk when you hear another baby cry in the grocery store. It's not a flaw in the system. It's a testament to how powerfully attuned your body becomes to your baby's needs, anticipating a feed before it even begins. Once lactation is established, your body enters a new phase of regulation, governed by a simple yet brilliant principle. Supply equals demand. This is arguably the most critical concept for maintaining a long-term milk supply. Your body doesn't just produce a random, fixed amount of milk each day. Instead, it constantly adjusts production based on how much milk is being removed from the breasts. The more frequently and effectively your baby breastfeeds, the more milk your body will make. It's a dynamic feedback loop that ensures your baby gets exactly what they need. Here's how it works on a cellular level. Prolactin, the milk-making hormone, is still the star player. Prolactin levels get a temporary boost in your bloodstream every time you breastfeed. However, the key to ongoing production lies within the breast itself. There is a specific protein in breast milk called the feedback inhibitor of lactation, or FIL. 
When the breast is full of milk, the concentration of FIL is high. This fill protein sends a local signal to the alveoli, telling them to slow down and stop making more milk. It's a we're full, stop production message. Conversely, when your baby breastfeeds and empties the breast, the FIL is removed along with the milk. With the inhibitor gone, the milk-producing cells get the message to ramp up production again. The emptier the breast, the faster it makes milk. The fuller the breast, the slower it makes milk. This is why frequent and effective milk removal is so important. If you regularly skip feeds or don't fully empty the breasts, milk and fill accumulate, signaling your body that less milk is needed. Over time, this will lead to a decrease in your overall milk supply. This elegant system is what allows your body to perfectly calibrate milk production to your baby's changing needs. Whether they're going through a growth spurt and feeding constantly, or as they start solids and feed a bit less. It's also why it's possible for people to breastfeed twins or even triplets. The increased demand from multiple babies leads to a proportionally increased supply. Your body doesn't know how many babies you have. It only knows how much milk is being requested. Trusting this system and responding to your baby's feeding cues is the foundation of a successful breastfeeding journey. So there you have it. The incredible journey of milk production, from hormonal whispers during pregnancy to a full-blown, responsive supply system. It's not magic, but it is a marvel of human biology. We've seen how your body lays the groundwork for months, with estrogen and progesterone building the necessary infrastructure. Then, with the delivery of the placenta, the hormonal landscape shifts dramatically, releasing the brakes and allowing prolactin to kickstart the production of that precious first food colostrum. It's a perfect handoff timed precisely to your baby's arrival. The entire process is a beautiful duet between two key hormones. Prolactin is the producer, the one responsible for making the milk within the cells of the breast. But that milk needs to be delivered, and that's where oxytocin, the delivery driver, comes in. Triggered by this simple, intimate act of your baby suckling, oxytocin ensures that the milk is released and flows to your hungry newborn. This teamwork between prolactin and oxytocin initiated by hormonal changes and sustained by your baby's cues, is the core of lactation. Ultimately, your body learns to fine-tune this process through the elegant principle of supply and demand. By responding to your baby's needs, you tell your body exactly how much milk to make. It's a system built on connection and communication. Understanding this science, I hope, removes some of the mystery and anxiety and replaces it with a sense of awe and confidence in your body's amazing capabilities. Thank you for joining me today to unpack the science. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this with anyone who might find it helpful. I'll see you in the next video.